feel like a bobblehead doll every time I hear that damn theme. Stop it! guys and welcome to my film review series of Beverly Hills Cop where I'll be going over every single one of them leading on to the new one which will be released on Netflix next week in Beverly Hills Cop Axel F. Just call it Beverly Hills Cop 4. What are y'all doing? So in preparation of the new film I decided to do a film review series of all three including the new one of course leading on to a ranking shortly after of all four so stay tuned for that as well. So released in 1984 Beverly Hills Cop tells the story of Detroit police officer Axel Foley who goes to Beverly Hills to investigate the murder of his friend only to find himself entangled with a very powerful local drug kingpin. Now, now let me go on record and I know a lot of YouTubers have been saying this about bad boys but I really never had that much nostalgia for Beverly Hills Cop. It was something I was introduced to much later in life. I do know it's considered one of Eddie Murphy's best. It is the one that pretty much pushed him to stardom, to international stardom. Now don't get me wrong. You know, despite that, I think Eddie Murphy is great. I like him. I think he fits just perfectly with all the others, like Jim Carrey, Chris Tucker, Martin Lawrence, and so on. But he's just not someone I followed regularly. Now, that, that's not a diss on the guy. Again, I like the guy, what I've seen of him, particularly his Nutty Professor movies in 48 Hours and Norbit and all them. He's just not somebody that I warmed up to. It, it's like Jim Carrey and Chris Tucker and Martin Lawrence and all them just kind of overshadowed Eddie Murphy for me, that is. But again, I like the guy. I, I have no complaints towards him. It just is what it is. With that being said, starting off the positives, again, I think Eddie Murphy is a terrific actor. He was great here. I can definitely see why this was his start and this was the movie that pushed him to world fame. This is pretty much the film that started that smart-ass, wise-cracking attitude that became the brand of his career. Sure, you had films like Trading Places in 48 Hours, but it wasn't until the third film and Beverly Hills Cop is when he really shined. Is when he really showed what he could do. In this film, in Beverly Hills Cop, he's very resilient, very lively. Which is what I think made the character the most likable, especially in the 80s. In Axel Foley. I think he did a really great job. His brand of comedy, it's laughable. It's diehard comedy. And again, it's just something that Eddie Murphy has perfected, especially back then in his heyday. That's pretty much made him an iconic actor for the time of this film's release up until, unfortunately, the mid-2000s. And I really did get a kick out of uh, seeing him in this film, despite his flaws, which I'll get into, which is not much, but despite that, I did enjoy watching this character, you know, just act out and just do his thing in this. And I like the chemistry between the, the detectives and Axel. You got Judge Reinhold, who plays Detective William Billy Rosewood, and John Ashton as Sergeant John Taggart. I like how them and Axel fully interacted with each other. I like the whole character dynamic between the three. You have John Ashton and Taggart, who's the more serious, almost asshole type of character at first, to where right when they first meet, he punches Axel Murphy's character in the gut, and it's like, well, he's going to be a problem throughout the whole movie, but then eventually kind of dissolves and warms up to the Axel character. And then you get Judge Reinhold and Billy, who's the more conscious, the more soft, understanding laid back of the two. There's some enjoyment there. There's some enjoyment in the dynamic and just the, the chemistry of it all. And I, I did appreciate that. I mean, I always did. That, that's one of the things that I do appreciate about this film. And when you get this Axel character who's supposed to, supposed to be on vacation, but it ends up actually investigating the murder of his friend, then you get these two guys, you know, John Ashton and Judge Reinhold's character just following him around, and it just becomes kind of like a, a cat and mouse sort of game to where you have Eddie Murphy's character, Axel, just kind of messing with him and kind of screwing with their task and trying to keep up with Axel and it was it was pretty funny. It was pretty it was pretty hilarious. So you have all that but eventually they start working with each other, which is kind of the reason why I don't really consider this as a buddy cop film because it, it's kind of a 
a mix in between that. But I don't really consider this as a buddy cop film because they don't really team up until like this, maybe the last part of the second act. But it's just mostly Axel doing his own thing. So I just, I don't really consider this a buddy cop movie though, even though it's described as one. It's different than Rush Hour, Bad Boys, Lethal Weapon, because those films, they team up actually. But with Beverly Hills Cop, and granted, this is the first in the series, but with Beverly as Cop, it's a solo guy. Even though there's bits and pizzas sprinkled in there where they, they do work together eventually, but still, it's not fully a buddy cop movie to me. But setting that aside, it was still pretty hilarious. It's still pretty funny watching these guys, watching Axel getting the best of these two guys all the time. Again, going back to the comedy, that I think that really worked for the tone of the film. It was pretty fun. And not to mention, you get a great story on this cop who tries to figure out who the hell killed his friend. Tries to crack down on these guys and who killed his friend and you will just come to find out that he's this big drug lord kingpin. But the whole thing with the friend getting murdered right in front of him while he was unconscious, I think that added a little bit of a personal vendetta and I, I did find that riveting. I like stories like that. It gave the film somewhat of a perfect edge that it needed for the story. I'll elaborate on that later, but for the story. I thought it was very enticing. It was a story that I could get behind. Not to mention the villains. You get the guy from Rambo 2, which kind of makes sense. He played the general in that, that was holding Rambo captive and torture him. It kind of made sense that he was the villain in this, because I, I thought he made a great villain in that. So did he in Beverly Hills Cop. Very stoic, you know, sort of a nonchalant take. Again, I thought it made sense that he was the villain in this. Of course, Rambo being kind of released after this, but still. And one more thing before I move on. It's just going back to Eddie Murphy and just the dialogue alone and that wisecracking attitude with just the, his line delivery and all, I thought was just genius. And you can tell this was an 80s movie because it, it just, all that originality, you can pretty much tell it's lost now, but you can see it everywhere in movies of the 80s and it's def it definitely shows here. But going back to the dialogue, I thought he was genius and I think a lot of the lines, I think he's well known, Eddie Murphy is well known for ad-libbing a lot of it and I wouldn't be surprised if it was the same here. The line delivery was just so fast and quick paced and it's just so funny that, again, I think that's what really enticed a lot of people to Eddie Murphy's brand and it's just the way he delivered and just the way he comes across it's just I, I think that's why a lot of people including myself even though he wasn't on my radar that much that doesn't make him any less likable to me I think he's always considered a genius in comedy again that's what made him plus Eddie Murphy has perfected this sort of like unique laugh that sort of became the butt of a joke in other comedies, specifically TV show urban comedies like The Wayans Brothers and Martin where they relentlessly kind of just made fun of it. So it just became a big joke. And correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not sure about 48 Hours or Trading Places. Maybe it happened in Trading Places. But I think Beverly Hills Cop is where that really started trending. But again, I could be wrong. <laughs> Moving on to my negatives. As much as I enjoyed certain elements of this film, there's a reason why this has never been in my top five or my top ten of films to really want to watch that much. Now, first of all, let me just say, since my first viewing of this film, I've learned to accept and appreciate what this film is, what they were trying to do. And this is the only negative I have that makes you feel any better. Don't get me wrong, I did enjoy this film for what it is, but honestly, and this is a total me thing. It's no one's fault. It's it's not the movie. It's me. It's me. <laughs> but I've said this many times, most notably here recently with Trigger Warning, that I need a little bit more action in my films, especially if it's labeled a buddy cop action packed film. Well, action film. As much as I appreciate certain aspects of this, that was the one element I felt like it was missing. Again, I know that's not the type of film that they were aiming for. It was mostly about Eddie Murphy's comedy. And to be honest, if it wasn't for that, this would probably be a little bit lower. But again, you have a good story. You have this story of these two friends meeting up, you know, getting together after years of being apart. 
and then somebody kills the one friend, that's like Punisher 101. When you're dealing with a plot like this, that should just be blatantly obvious. You have your friend, that your best friend that you've known your whole life, murdered right in front of you while you're unconscious, because he does get knocked unconscious, A. Murphy's character does, two feet away from him, he gets blown to the head, and then when he wakes up, friend is dead. He knew he got bombarded. He knew somebody knocked him out, and he knew somebody killed him. Now, again, I know that's not the type of character that this is, but I wanted more of kind of like a, I don't know, a Rambo slash Punisher character, but... At the same time, being comedic, I know that's probably impossible to do. And again, I understand that's not what they were trying to go for. But I've seen comedy films, most notably 48 Hours, that had a little bit more action in it while still maintaining comedy. And I felt like that they kind of dropped the ball with that here. And again, that's one of the main reasons. That's the main reason. The only reason why I haven't really quite warmed up to this, I've warmed up to it a little bit more since I first viewed it, but again, I just felt like there could have been more. There could have been more potential. More shoot 'em ups more explosions, fights, instead of just an, an investigation story type. Now, again, I did appreciate the story, but I felt like some more action was needed in order for me to get more invested and more pumped. I like feeling like I'm on the edge of my seat. Every time I watch a movie like this, I feel like I want to be on the edge of my seat every time. And with this, I just didn't quite get there. It just didn't quite satisfy me to that level. But I digress. Honestly, I do. I'm more forgiving, trust me. <laughs> Again, if it weren't for Eddie Murphy's genius comedic reliefs of his brand, of just how he delivers and everything, this would be a little lower. Again, I appreciate what they were trying to do. I appreciate what the film was going for. I really do. It just wasn't enough for me. So if you're an Eddie Murphy fan, regardless of the film's pace, you'll find some merits. Give it a chance. Beverly Hills Cop, what was your thoughts on it? Have you seen it yet? It came out in 1984. You're bound to. It's one of those kind of considered cult classics. What was your thoughts on this film or in the, fr the whole entire franchise in general, which I will get into eventually? Are you an Eddie Murphy fan in general? Was this your favorite from him? Or do you prefer his other films over this? Or are you somebody like me who wasn't sold completely on this? Or do you just not care for him at all? Leave me a comment down below. Give me your thoughts. Thank you so much, guys, for watching this. I really do appreciate it like subscribe comment and share and as always make sure to click that bell icon so you don't miss a thing and i will see you on the next one peace